Amen. Now let's get to business. Father's Day. Father's Day. Today we'll be talk, talking about godly fathers. Now, throughout scripture, we see that God reveals himself in his word as our heavenly father. So whether we have earthly fathers or not, whether we had a good relationship with them or not, every single one of us get to enjoy the privilege of having a perfect father. And that is our heavenly father. Amen. Oh, it is such a privilege to have him. And he, as our father, he loves us unconditionally. There is nothing we can do to increase his love for us. And there's nothing we can do for him to love us less. His love is unconditional, but also he provides for our needs. In whatever need we have, he is a father. I like the word Abba Father when we start praying. It means daddy, you know. Abba, Father. He's our Abba. He provides for us, but he also guides us along the journey of life that we have here on earth. His intention is to constantly be walking with us. Isn't it amazing to have just a father who tells you, you know what, don't go that way, just go this way. And he's a perfect father and he knows everything. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your yesterday. He knows next year. And he gets to tell us exactly what to do every single day if we are to hear from him. What a blessing. These truths are so comforting to know. It is very comforting to know that we don't have to do life on our own. We have a heavenly father. Now, when we think about God as our father, um, these truth also provide men with some principles to live by as earthly fathers, right? Um, God has entrusted men with a great responsibility to provide spiritual leadership in their homes and to their families. So just like him, God has entrusted men right here on earth to be his hands and feet right here on earth to do what he does as a father. But here's the thing, even the best earthly father will not fulfill all these responsibilities 100%. There is no perfect earthly father. But that still means every father ought to strive to meet all these responsibilities because God has entrusted them. But as they surrender themselves to the Lord, God is faithful to walk them through all the process of fatherhood. Amen? Now, Sometimes it's easy to talk about these things and say, well, they, these are your responsibility, fathers, and this is what you ought to do. And this, but practically, what does that look like really? Well, today I have help from fathers to come and share their experiences in terms of these responsibilities and how they are becoming godly fathers every single day. So please welcome our panelists today, beginning with my very own husband, Louis Ruhiza. <laughs> and Santel Burns, please welcome Santel. And we have our own Winston. Come on out, Winston. But also, I thought, how cool would it be to also hear from adult children, those who have experienced and have been impacted by their fathers. So please welcome to this stage, Hermie and Catherine. Thank you so much for agreeing to join me right here on stage. So today I'll just be asking you questions. May I ask you to just share your experiences with us this morning, amen? Now, to begin with, let's just get down to the introductions. First of all, what is your name? Where were you born? Uh, tell us uh, how you grew up, uh, just a little bit briefly. And also, uh, if you are you know, adult child, how many siblings do you have, sisters and brothers? And if you're a father, for those fathers up here, tell us how many children you have and their ages, please. Yes. Uh, hi, church. You good? You look awesome. So uh, my name is Winston, Winston Tafungwa, and uh, I have two kids, Michael and Michaela. Of course, married uh, to a very beautiful wife, Jacqueline. Um, and uh, yeah, married for eight years now. And uh, yeah, I just thank God for every day, how he continue guiding me to become more of a godly father. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sinta Barnes. 
I am from the United States, uh, Alabama specifically. Um, I'm married eight years, uh, and we have two kids. We have a three-year-old who will be four in October, and a eight-month-old who will also be four. No, no, she won't, because eight months don't equal four. Uh, <laughs> eight months will be a year in October. So <laughs> my math is a little sketchy this morning, but. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. My name is. My name is Louis. Um, I am married to the beautiful Pastor Matrona. <laughs> and we've been married for 13 years. And we have five children. And uh, we've been blessed so far. Um, I'm originally from Burundi. And um, I come from a family of five. We are five of us. Uh, my dad is no longer alive, but my mom is alive. And um, I'm blessed to still have a family. Good morning, everyone. I'm Hermi, and I'm, Philipp I'm from Philippines. Uh, uh, my father is a pastor, and uh, I have four siblings. Uh, that's it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Catherine Masamu. I am from Tanzania, also a family of five. <laughs> I'm the last born. Um, of five children, yeah, and uh, my dad is a pastor and a missionary as well. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Well, looks like five is the magic number this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start looking at fatherhood here, and um, obviously we love acronyms, right? So we're going to go through the word father and break it down and start with the letter F. Uh, when we think of godly father, we, we think of faithful fathers, right? A godly father is a faithful father, is a father who is faithful to obey God's commandment, is faithful to obey the scriptures. He is a friend of Jesus, and his intentions are to bring his children to know the Lord, to love the Lord, to be friends with Jesus, but also to obey Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, um... I love um, what Joshua said in, uh, in Joshua 25, verse 15. Um, he says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphorite or the gods of Amorites, in whose land are you living? In whose land you are, you are living? But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now, if you remember, you know, Joshua is speaking here to the Israelites and man, the Israelites were told over and over about the goodness of their heavenly father who was constantly providing for them, loving them, being a perfect father to them. But from time to time, they would start worshiping other gods. And here we, we see Joshua, you know, speaking to the Israelite and say, hey, okay, fine. Now, you guys, you need to make a decision. Are you going to serve this Lord, but as for me and my household. Now, what I like about this, Joshua could have just said, as for me, as Joshua, right? But he's saying, no, because I'm a leader of my family. I'm a leader of my household. What I'm saying here is, as for me and my children and my wife and my household, we will serve the Lord. He did not even need to go and consult and say, you know what, children, I was just thinking, would you like to be going to, to the temple, would you like to, to serve the Lord? No, he, he resolved and said, as for me and my household. And I believe this is faithful fathers who obey the Lord. This is where, what they will resolve as well, is as for me and my household and do everything to make sure that actually happened, everything in their power. Now, in this world, we have good fathers, but there's also godly fathers. There are so many people, so many fathers out there who are not godly fathers, but they can still be good fathers. So I want to start with Winston. Winston, who do you think is a, is a good father? Not necessarily godly father, but a good father. Uh, thank you, Pastor Mari, uh, for actually framing that very well, godly and good. Uh, as a good father, it's just more of just a, a man who meets uh, those basic uh, requirements for being a dad in the house. So... It, the basic needs for the kids, um, household. 
So just being able to raise his, his kids, being able to take the responsibility as a father to his children, and at the same time to the household in general, being the wife there, whether the wife is there or not, they're all single dads, just as a single mom, right? So just a man who meets those required needs as a father, to raise them in his, in his own setting or the setting of, because good dad, not being a goldy dad, but good, a good dad, it depends on what out, from the upbringing or the setting of the particular culture that what requires to be a good dad. Mm. So uh, it's good that you say now the goalie dad, now that has a different foundation that yes. actually brings another dimension from okay. 2D to 3D now. So I think yeah. they have that Yeah, more. from 2 to 3D. All right, Lewis, walk us through who is a godly father. Well, let, let, let us put it very clear. Only God can make you a godly father. I mean, it's, that, that is a given. And um, if I may be honest, it is hard being a dad. It is hard, especially in our DNA time now, it is hard being uh, a dad. And without the proximity of God, it is hard. Because only him can show you on how you can be a godly dad. So he has got the blueprint. So being close to him is fundamental if you want to become a godly dad. Um, so there, there are three things which I, I, I thought of which are very simple. The number one is if you want to become a godly father, you have to love and serve God sacrificially. I mean, you've got to be involved, uh, whether it be in the church, um, uh, whether it be uh, in outside setting, you have to show your reverence to God. And number two, um, you must love uh, your wife and children sacrificially. I mean, if you want to be a godly father, I mean, he, he provides us a blueprint on how to do that. So we, it is our duty now to walk into that path of becoming a godly father. And number three, which is uh, sometimes a bit forgiven, is uh, a godly father not only loves and serves um, the, um, uh, what did I say, uh, household. household, but he also serves his community. Because if you want to become a godly father, you, you're not going to be a godly father only at home. There are so many people in your radius that are looking up to you and want you become a godly father. I mean, um, a good example of that, if I may transgress a bit. Um, I talked sometimes to my driver, and my driver sometimes, one day he made this profound comment. He told me, you know, I look at how you treat your wife and how you carry yourself all the time. I try to do the same thing at my house. You've been really a father to me. That really touched me quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, because a lot of what we do, you know, you know, people are observing. And my father used to tell me this all the time. He used to tell me, you see, people don't really pay attention to your words. They really look at how you carry yourself around. Yeah. So that speaks quite a bit of volume. Amen. Amen. Now, Santel, um, if you may walk us maybe through how your father's faithfulness in, in, in uh, following God, or maybe lack of, um, has impacted your children now. So this is third generation. Yeah, so we, we've been blessed uh, because we've had a father of faith. Um, when I was a kid, um, my father was not necessarily a church-going individual, um, but he always ensured that we had to go to church there was no way we could miss church just because he was not going to church. Um, so we were always forced uh, to go <laughs> with my mom. I say forced, but I mean, we went but uh, <laughs> uh, with my mom. But I, I would say somewhere around my 11, 12, 13 year, uh, my dad uh, met Jesus um, and completely changed uh, his life where you no longer call him on, called him on the couch on Sundays. Uh, he was now in church, um, and now he even more forcefully <laughs> mm. uh, pushed us to, to be more involved in church and to go to church. And so I think it's through that, uh, I guess, those traditions and then through that, um, I don't know, that lineage 
that we're able to, to claim and my kids are able to uh, see. And I'm able to to reflect some of those uh, some of those things, some of those characteristics. Uh, he again, he went from the couch to the church to the deacon board in his in his church, you know, to the treasurer. Uh, he's the official grass cutter of the church. Um, so my kids, although you know young now, are starting to you know they begin to see um, just his dedication um, and just his love for 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 Christ. Um, especially when we're at home. He, it's always funny because he'll ask the kids to pray and, you know, my little one will rumble through some words and then my dad will be like, okay, great, let me now really pray for us. So uh, he wants to make sure that God is listening. Uh, so um, so it's, it's nice that we have that foundation and uh, we're able to stand on that. So, Amen. Amen. Um, I, yes, you can clap. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me uh, point this question to, to Catherine. How has your father's faith impacted your faith today? Well, that's a really good question. Um, so primarily every child has a foundation that uh, the child is built on and um, which affects their belief system. And from there, they have habits and behaviors uh, and patterns that they develop through that belief system and foundation that the father creates in the home. So for me, having a faithful father um, really built a foundation that I can build the rest of the house uh, on. So up until I am who I am today is because of those strong foundations my, my father ensured that the family had. Um, and he was really strict about that. <laughs> so that really helped. We didn't understand it then as kids, but you know when you grow up and you're like, oh, I get it. I get it. Thank God that he told me to do A, B, C, D, to read my Bible and pray every day. Thank God because it's shaped me to become the person I am today. And also his faithfulness introduced me to God the Father, um, which now I'm, a, I'm able to have a relationship with both without comparing the two. Mm -hmm. And just to encourage also people that maybe don't have that background with their father, this is able to be developed as you grow. Foundations can be broken and rebuilt again in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, and uh, belief systems can be changed. And that's why scripture says be renewed by the transformation of your mind. So, yeah, just to encourage you as well that that can happen in the church. Amen. 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 Now, let's move on to letter A in father. Fathers ought to be affectionate fathers. Amen? Amen. I know this could be a little bit countercultural because some of us grew up where, you know, your fathers had to be very strict. It's almost like that's how you are a man of the house. It's like you don't show affection. You don't show your emotions or anything. But when we look in scripture, honestly speaking, I believe fathers ought to be, you know, affectionate. They have to show compassion. They have to um, show attention to their children approval where where they do good and, and you approve them and say that was great i i've seen what you've done you know i love you just the words i mean in the tanzanian culture i know many of us have grew, grown up just to hear your father say i love you it was a, it's a miracle if it ever happened right but when we look in scripture you know i, I like what the psalmist says in, in psalm 103 verse 3 it says as a father has compassion on his children so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. In a sense, it, it's expected, the scripture is saying, I mean, it's natural for a father to have a compassion on his children. So it's saying, just as you see that happening, so as the Lord will have compassion on those who fear him, meaning us, our, as children of God, God will have compassion on us the same way our Fathers in on earth have compassion on us, but we know that's not necessarily the case for all fathers. So this affection topic, I, I just want to ask the fathers up here, what are some of the ways that you are intentionally showing attention, showing affection and showing approval to your children and possibly ways that might be very different from how you grew up? So um, let me hear from from Santel. Um, um, thank you. 
Uh, I'm going to approach this one from a different route. We hit some turbulence in the first service, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, to take a different approach. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I grew up. Uh, look, my, I mean, you know, in in Africa, there's no black people, right? Everyone is who they are. But in America, there are black people. So uh, I, my dad is obviously a black man. Uh, so, you know, my dad is the product of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. So just the environment he lived in was much different. And so, um, you know, he was not, I, I said he wasn't the most affectionate. It, and I feel like I need to revise and extend my remarks. Uh, he was affectionate, but like you said, he didn't use the love word very often. Um, he would somehow show that he was proud of us, but maybe not say he was proud of us. And I, I, I understand it as I think through this, and you've made me think through this this morning, um, that we as fathers, you know, put a lot of emphasis, even as husbands, on the responsibilities that we've been giving. And so we show responsibilities by the fact that I have put a roof over your head, I put food on your table, I've given you clothes on your back, and you're getting an education. What more do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, so uh, I think what more is me meeting the emotional need. And I told a story this morning now. Um, I'll try to get through the story without the turbulence, but, um, you know, again, my dad... We're talking about emotions, so it's fine. You, he broke down first service and showed emotions. It's a safe space. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure my kid would be like, why are you crying? Uh, so, um, yeah, my, my, I, I just remember once he was on the phone, I don't remember who, but I just remember he was saying how proud he was of his two boys. And it wasn't something that we always heard. Um, maybe it was demonstrated, not heard. And it, 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 you know, for anyone who watches The Office, there's an episode where Michael, you know, is giving compliments to his staff, but he was like, I would never say that to them in public. Uh, so uh, that's kind of how you feel sometimes. But I have tried to take that and be the opposite with my child. And my children are small, but every night when we go to bed, I remind him how happy we are to have him as part of our family, how much love he brings to us as a family and just how much how changed we are because they both have entered our lives. Sometimes we change because we hadn't slept uh, and I haven't, you know, I haven't seen a full night's sleep in, in five years. But, um, you know, we <laughs> uh, all those. I want him to know that I want him to hear every day. I don't want him to leave the house wondering, does my father love me? Is my father proud of me? So I want to make sure that he understands that each and every day, so. Thanks, yeah. Same question for Winston. Uh, yes, uh, just what you shared, um, from just, just wanna pu uh, pull some from like my dad. Uh, me, my dad was, re was a soldier, was a hardcore, hardcore dad. <laughs> it's like, oh my street, they knew what time to pass, like if you ask, they will tell you, like, you pass that area, you have to be quiet. <laughs> so he was that kind of a dad. And, uh, but one thing is, despite his being uh, hard and everything, I know I've never, to be honest, I don't remember the time when he actually told me, like, I love you. Like, the word comes in, like, I love you, son. No, but he did it in his own way. Like, you could see the things that he does. You know, this is love. You know, they don't, there's no error, no mistake. But at the same time, from him also, because of his work, you know, he, he, he used to be away for very, for many times because he was a pilot, so he used to not be present. So, but whenever he was present, he made sure that we, we felt. He would come with gifts and he made sure that he completed his time not being there, right? But at the same time, from his affection, I'm just trying to carry what he, whenever we do anything right, he will plaster us as billboards all over to all our cousins, relatives, what he will, I will be his bag moving with him everywhere. And I'll be like, where are we going now? Mm -hmm. Just because you got that mark in math, you know, <laughs> so it parades you all throughout. It'd be so ashamed, but I understood him. So carrying down to my, right now, to, uh, to my kids, for me, that affection. So I borrow something from him, but he always tells me that. He used to tell me, he's no longer with me, with us. He died in 2006, but he always said, take my positive side. But the negative side, leave it to me. Mm. 
take the good ones. So my kids, uh, Michael and Michaela, always find time to be with them, pour their affection. And now that I, I know the base and the, the background of what being a godly father is, that helps me a lot. It's not just being present, but also being able to say it, that Michael, I love you. You have made it, I love Michael, it's okay. God is gracious. And it's like, so you forgive me? It's like, yeah, now I forgive you. So, and also being a dinosaur, being a di uh, whatever, whatever it is, I meet them in that area. Michael and Michaela. So that's more of just showing my affection, not just saying it, being there present, because time plus love equals to relationship. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I marry all those and actually work through them. So for me, that's from, for showing that Michael and Michaela, it's not only them, but also reflect that to their mother, mm -hmm. because they always look at their mother, because yes. recently they were like, Dad, you have to buy flowers to mom. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's plan which flowers. Yeah, so I show that to their mother, my wife, and it really resonates very well with them because I see how now they respond on yes. that, like Michael yes. and Michaela. So yeah, so that's it. I thank Amen. God for that. Amen. Amen. <sighs> I grew up, um, just to echo his comments, um, I, and I think while I... He was speaking, I was a bit processing it. Um, the, our fathers, you know, they, they, they're from a different generation. And that generation, uh, love was spoken differently. Um, and um, I give the grace to my father uh, in that area. And I also realized when we had our first kid that I am actually a product of him. Like like everything I do. So that made me realize that there are certain things which I grew up seeing which were good, other things which I need not probably to bring in the way I, you know, I grow my own kids. So one of the things which, um, you know, I struggled with when I was young is, you know, he was working hard, he was always traveling and um, his presence, you know, as a kid, you always want the presence of your father, you know, even in small activities. He, he was doing his best. He was doing his best. But last year when we were doing a book study, um, there's a book we read together with a man um, about kingdom man. And there are three aspects of a kingdom man that I learned that changed completely my trajectory. And these three aspects of a kingdom man, number one is show up. As a dad, you have to show up. I mean, nothing will happen unless you show up. And number two, be present. Dads, we can show up in functions of our kids. We can be present in the living room, but be absent-minded. Yeah. I mean, we have now technology, so many things pulling us away. You, can, you need to be present. You need to, to, to acknowledge them, to tell them, hey, okay, I understand this, so what can we do better? Certain things like small talks to show them that you're present. And lastly, be consistent. Because without consistency, it becomes very hard. Because when you show up and you're present, you build a certain expectation that, you know what? Yeah. Dad is going to be there. And if you're not there for a kid, it, I mean, it, it, it breaks their heart. So for me, I've learned those three things are very fundamental. And I've shared this with my wife so many times. I try so hard. Sometimes I fail. And I tell my children. I mean, I've never heard my dad telling me I'm sorry. But I... <laughs> Tell my kids sometimes, hey, I fail. I'm sorry. And it is okay. For them, they understand. They see that I'm sorry, that I tried. So that is one way that I show them that as a dad as well, sometimes I fail, some, some other times I do good. And it is okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, so, you know, it, the, the fact of the matter is we all have our own stories and things uh, and how we grew up and how our father treated us. And I always say they tried their best with what they had, with the knowledge they had, with the culture they had. Um, and there's grace and forgiveness in that. So if you are struggling in terms of how you grew up and how your father either showed or didn't show affection, um, just remember there's grace and, and remember to forgive them. But also if you are a father who is struggling in this area, 
remember that, you know, there is forgiveness or maybe you're looking at your adult kids and you realize you've never said I love you to them. You've never showed them affection or compassion in any way. You've just been that one strict father. I just want you to remember that there is, there is grace and there's forgiveness and there's always starting now. You know, and the Holy Spirit is present to help us with that. When we are willing to say, Holy Spirit, I didn't do very well here as a father. Help me now. He will start. It doesn't matter how old your children are. They can be as adults and you can start at that point loving them and showing them affection. And the Holy Spirit will also heal their hearts so that they're able to accept and actually enjoy this new relationship that you might have with them. Amen. Amen. Um, but let's move on. In the word father, there's also a T. So I believe fathers ought to be teaching fathers. Amen. In Ephesians uh, 6 uh, verse 4, Paul says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Uh, discipline and instruction. Now, Hermie, can you tell us a little bit what are some of the things that you are thankful that your father passed on to you through discipline and instruction? Uh, so, uh, as uh, we grew up as uh, pastor's kids, so one of the discipline uh, my father taught us is uh, me and my siblings uh, on our childhood. Uh, my father taught us to sit on the front uh, on Sunday, <laughs> yeah, uh, we have to sit every Sunday on the front, and uh, yeah. But uh, later on, I realized that uh, as I grew up, I realized that I have learned a lot uh, when our, we sit on the front. Yeah. Uh, one of it is uh, I was able to learn instruments on. Uh, because uh, when I was sitting on the front, I was doing like this, the mm. front. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I'm feeling I'm a part of the worship team. Yeah. yeah. So uh, as you can see today, <laughs> uh, even I'm far from my country, I was here serving. Amen. So, that's it. Praise the Lord. Yes. You, you see, it's the little things that fathers do. You might think that asking your children to come to church or just go sit in the front means nothing. But here we see that it actually impacted his life. And he started learning the beats of the music. And now he became interested in, in you know, learning an instrument. But not only that, you become comfortable with being a part of worship. Because you've sat in your, your entire life in the front, right next to the worship team. Amen. So there is in the little details, fathers. Amen. Kat, what about you? Um, wow. Uh... So I learned from my father, we used to do mission trips together. Uh, when he was a missionary in Mozambique, we'd do lots of road trips together. Um, so from that, I really saw him, you know, living out the great commission of going out to see all the world and spreading the gospel. So from that, it really has taught me the importance of sharing the good news to, to others. Um, he did church planting, and I'm so glad and blessed to have been part of a team that that uh, started a church plant in Wanza. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fruit of, <laughs> amen. <laughs> and my, my father now looks at me and he just says, wow, I'm so proud of you. I, it's like seeing myself in you, but the girl version. <laughs> so I now drive long distances and yeah, and I'm just very conscious of sharing the gospel with others. Amen, amen, <laughs> wonderful. Um, I want to draw your attention to what Moses writes in Deuteronomy 6, um, from verse 6 to 7. He says, he's talking to the Israelites now. He's been talking to them over and over, you know, throughout, um, reminding them of their father in heaven and all the things that he's done to them. And he's, you know, urging them to obey his commands. And here he says, these commandments that I've given you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lay down and when you get up. Literally meaning 
with everything that you do. Impress these God commandments in your children's heart. Now, here's my question to you, Lewis. What are some unique ways or maybe unique times or unique resources that you are using to teach your children, our children, <laughs> the ways of the Lord? <laughs> well, if you don't know, we're raising a village. So <laughs> raising a village, there are a lot of fights at home. They fight a lot. And we use those fights to teach them about the Bible. Because during those fights, there are certain behaviors that are exposed, and we teach them about an individual within the Bible that behaved the way they behaved, and what are the consequences of that behavior. Mm -hmm. So that has been working quite well. And um, uh, with our firstborn, uh, Anais, she's become very smart now. She knows the Bible, and now she will counter with another verse and will tell her, that's not how you apply that verse. <laughs> no. <laughs> But that tells me that she is paying attention and we need just to now um, shape the tree. <laughs> um, the other thing uh, we do, uh, we invite them sometimes into um, our times of prayer when we're praying together in our room. We invite them to just come. Um, even though we, we're in their room, we want them just to see us to praying together as mom and dad. And we also do devotional sometimes at, the, uh, at night uh, because us as parents, we have to be transparent. We don't got it together all the time. Sometimes we fail, we are too busy, but we do tell them that it is important for them even at night to pray, even when not around, to find some times before bedtime to pray. And that till today, I think um, they do that uh, quite a lot. Amen. Thank you. Um, again, here, you know, sound teaching from God's word should flow from the lips of every godly father. That is a responsibility that we cannot run away from. If we, if, if a father, I keep saying we, I'm not a father. If a father <laughs> claims to be, uh, I'm a parent though. If a father claims to be godly, then that has to show in from their lips, from their actions, and from how they react to situations. So I truly believe teaching uh, God's word, you know, fathers must be, um, must instruct, they must reprove, they must correct, and they must train first themselves and then their family. Because we cannot claim to teach the word if we don't know the word. Right. Yeah. So fathers, it's your, your first responsibility is really to learn the word, to correct yourself so that you can correct your children, to reprove yourself so you can reprove your children. So the word of God is your friend. It's, that's what you need to spend the most time with. And also you are also um, becoming a, you, you are becoming a father like God. So the best person to spend time with is God. If we want to be like God, we spend time with God. Amen. So uh, there is no option here. Unfortunately, fathers, if you are to become godly fathers, you have to spend time with God. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to move on to letter H. Fathers. Fathers must be hardworking fathers. Amen? Yes. I'm only hearing the ladies. Amen. <laughs> fathers, are we in the house? Hard-working fathers. I mean, and this is biblical. I'm not just saying this. First Timothy 5, 8 says this. Um, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, especially their own household, has denied the faith. This is the word of God, not my words. But here are the questions for the fathers up here. Let me, let me ask you, um, Winston, um, how are you intentionally first working hard, showing your children that you're working hard, but also modeling for them how to work hard? Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much for that question. But I just want to... Uh, start from where I saw the example of a hardworking father. Because for me, it was my dad. 
I learned, I saw him really working hard, as in work was, was everything about him. And with that, it, I kind of took that, and uh, even when, when it came to my uh, education, school, and even afterwards, when I came to work, and then later on start my own business, because right now I'm running my own business. And with that, it has been work and work, but because I saw what it means to work and actually being dedicated to that work and passion, passionate about your work. Because my, my dad was always tell, he always used to tell me that work, but without your passion, you're just gonna, just gonna yeah, destroy yourself. Because mm. you have to love what, you, what you're working at. Because for him, he loved uh, aviation. He loved being a pilot all throughout. So for me, my passion is being creative. Mm. I'm a creative person from way school up to where I am right now running in a creative agency. So I've been putting my time into work without any excuses. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, being able also to, to show my kids what I'm working on, what, what, what is their father, what is the job of their father. So Michael and Michaela, the old, if you ask them right now, they say, my dad is a designer. <laughs> my, dad, <laughs> my dad works in the computer. He has a computer, he has a mouse, he has a keyboard. So I've, try, I've really tried to show them what my work is all about, what my company does. And if you see Michael, whenever he opens, it used to be a, a broken laptop, Will you open it and be there tapping on it, I'll be like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm working, Dad, I'm working. I'm like, okay. But at the same time, uh, just not just to model the work, but also to be able to show them that there is work, but also there is serving God. Mm -hmm. There is another more that that one is much more important than just work, work. So, God first, and then this comes next. And mm -hmm. why God first is because so that I can have time with you, time with your mother, time with just building this relationship together, and then work will follow. But at the same time, they understand working is what gives them uh, school fees, going to school, mm -hmm. gives them their shoes, yeah. buys them their toys put that food in the kitchen, you know, everything. So there are times when I take my leave, my, Michael will be like, but dad, why are you here? Because <laughs> he knows you're supposed to go to work. Because if you don't go to work, I need my new dinosaur, right? Yeah. But at the same time, also to be able to tell them that, listen, with all that, make sure that I, t this is something I tell them, like I am here so that I can be able to also have time with you, despite yeah. being the world. Yeah, so that's it for, for me. And I, I just pray to God to continue showing and guiding me so yeah. that they can be able to model that to them without even forgetting their space or their place in God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Um, and the, let, the next letter is E. I believe that godly fathers ought to be exemplary fathers. They have to set example. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, their, their mindset should be that of Paul's perspective, you know, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. I think a godly father has to be able to say that, child, be imitator of me as I am of Christ. Now, here's my question um, for, for Catherine and Hermy. What are some of the things that you caught from your father? Just, just in one word, you don't need to explain a lot, just something you uh, caught from your father i think i caught the compassion passion amen okay. yeah that's good i caught his good looks <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm humble i'm humble <laughs> uh, uh, I, I caught his uh, worship. My, my father loves to worship every single morning. He's worshiping the whole day. The house is filled with worship. So I learned to worship from my father. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, you, you see, growing up, I didn't realize this. My, my father loved prayer times. And he had this faith that, like, literally anything you tell him, he'll pray. And, in, like, the way he communicated to me or the way I saw it is, anything is possible. Like if somebody 
cannot walk, you can just say in the name of Jesus and they'll just walk just like that. And that's what I walked away with. Even in the times that I had backslidden from my faith, the one thing that I knew, if I call on the name of Jesus, things change. And I didn't realize what effect it was having in me, but because I was just watching him praying and praying for other people and people getting healed left and right. But it changed my mindset. And even today, the one thing that um, does not wave in my life is the faith that I have in Jesus responding to prayers. Amen. It's not even a question to me, so, but it's something that I didn't realize that it grew from when I was a little child. So um, our fathers are great, great examples and fathers out there, just make sure that you are able to tell your children, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. And lastly, fathers, with the letter R, fathers ought to be reliable. R is for reliable fathers. We see in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, it says, Paul write this, This then is how you ought to regard us, as servants of Christ and as those who entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Now, Paul here was talking about the gospel, that they have been entrusted with the gospel, and they must prove to be faithful. They must prove to be reliable, to take that gospel farther, to take that gospel and share it as Jesus commanded. Now, fathers, you're being entrusted with the gospel first to take it first and foremost to your children, to the little tiny human beings that God is entrusting you with. Now, my question here is, what are some of the challenges that you face in making sure that you are a reliable father, you are a consistent father, and you are a present father? And what are some of adjustments or changes you've had to make in order to remain faithful to your children, um, to the children that God has entrusted to you? Um, we'll start with Lewis. Being a dad... In this DNA age, I mean, um, there's this thing called technology that came. Technology invaded our homes. And um, by that, you as a dad, you wear so many hats and you can find yourself bringing work at home. And you're completely absent. So one of the things I adjusted uh, very early on, and this came about um, a time when I had this conversation, it was in my early years when I moved to Tanzania, I was, I was a workaholic. And I, someone told me once, uh, Louis, you need to realize one thing, um, your time with your family, you will not get to do a redo. That time is gone, it's gone, but work will always be there. That blew up my mind right there. And it made me change certain aspects of my life and some of those things is I've had to let go certain things about my work, uh, about times when I know I am going home. I put my phone on airplane mode. It is okay. I mean, it's hard. At first, it's hard because you don't know what's happening behind. But people around me have had to adjust to that because they know if his phone is off, it's either he's at church or with his family. Even my whole family back home, they know this. He's not available. He's somewhere. And they've had to live with that. It's okay. So even with that, I mean, that has helped me being present, being in the moment with my family, with my wife, especially when we're on dates. And my mind is not elsewhere. Um, um, yesterday we were chit-chatting with my buddy here with our devotions that dads, at one point when we get home, we need our nothing box so that we can just come down from that cloud you know, because we've been fighting demons, it helps. It helps. <laughs> so that has helped me quite a lot. And um, it has also taught an important lesson also to my children, knowing that um, I, I am, I've switched off that so that I can be with you guys. Mm -hmm. Or we are going to rest with mom because we are tired and we want to come back to attend to you guys because we want to be healthy. That is one thing we've been teaching them quite often and, and they appreciate and they know that it is for them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, there you have it, church. Um, a godly father, 
is a faithful one, affectionate one. He's a teacher. He's hardworking. He sets an example, and he is reliable. Amen? Amen. Now, while paying attention to all these things that we've said, a godly father also remembers that his own performance is no guarantee that his children would turn out right. At the end of the day, you may do everything right and still your children might not. There's no guarantee that your children will not uh, have a spiritual catastrophe, right? But just like children and all the fathers and everybody else, we can all turn from our sins. And our gracious heavenly father is ready to forgive and to restore our souls. So whatever that has happened in our individual lives, whether caused by our fathers or a lack of a godly fatherhood in our lives, God is available to restore our souls. Amen? Amen. Well, fathers, may I ask you, please stand. All the fathers, please stand. Yes, we can clap for them. Yes, Father. Come on, church. Let's clap for them. They're doing a great job. And today, fathers, you are receiving a special package from your church family, and this is socks and soda. Socks and soda for pops. Amen. As you receive your, a pair of socks, it's, they are colorful and wonderful, by the way. Yeah. I love them. Uh, as you're receiving a pair of, of socks right now, as you come outside, please, there's a small tent out there that's been prepared for you to hang out, grab a cold soda and hang out with other fathers and just, you know, exchange some ideas, things you've heard today. Uh, maybe talk a little bit, enjoy your time together. Let me just say this. You are doing a great job. Yeah. You are doing a great job. You have a lot of responsibilities. You are doing a great job, and our Heavenly Father is with you, and he's for you. Amen? Let us pray for you, Louis, if you may help me. Um, let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, bless every father with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let them know that they are not alone. Um, in whatever you've called them to do in the lives of their children, that God, you are with them to support them. You are with them to guide them and to walk with them. Sh show them how much you, you delight in the work that they are doing. Affirm their value of whatever it is that they're doing in their families as fathers, but also affirm their value as your children, Lord. Confirm their worth daily to them so that they know they are loved by their heavenly father. Create in them a deep sense of trust in you that they can always count in you, Lord, knowing that no matter how hard it gets to father children, to take care of their family, to provide for their family, to work hard, and yet to still be reliable, to be available, to be committed, to be affectionate, Lord, in all of this, God, may they know that they are not alone. Let them know that every unselfish act of love and, and encouragement that they have offered to their families has been a gift to you as God. Show them how effective their prayers are. That whatever they are asking you, that God, you hear their prayers, Lord. For you hear the prayers of godly men. God, continue to show them that their prayers are effective in their families. No matter how big, no matter how small their ask is. Lord Jesus, affirm these fathers. Affirm them. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you're with them and you're for them. Dear Lord, demonstrate to us your amazing love, grace, and forgiveness, Lord. Yes. As we seek to love you and to know you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. 
Help us to see, Lord, through our children, that your eyes, realizing that in your hands, they are in the safest place they can ever be, Lord. Mm. Teach us to meet the needs of our children that are within our ability to do so. But help us, Lord, to trust you with the rest. Push out any needless fears and grant us godly wisdom and spiritual guidance to lead and direct those precious children in your path. Lord, fill us fathers today and every day with the best of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Fathers, God bless you. You may have a seat and our panelists, thank you so much for your time today. God bless you. Please, a round of applause for our panelists.